I'm Angelo Biasi, and I'm solving for systemic AI literacy for K-12, higher ed, and corporate talent. Now, we've all heard the quotes. 40% of CEOs do not believe that their organizations are going to be economically viable in 10 years. It's not AI that's going to take your job. It's the person using AI that will. And then one of my favorites, coding is effed, and that's where I want to be. That came from a frustrated high school student that I know. And a quote that I saw just a couple weeks ago, which really kind of got me going, and I think is my new fave, you know what the biggest problem with pushing all things AI is? Wrong direction. I want AI to do my laundry and dishes so I can do art and writing. Not for AI to do art and writing so I can do the laundry and dishes. Well, maybe someday. And we've all seen the stats. 85 million jobs displaced. Or is it increase in productivity in GDP? And really, it's just a matter of perspective. Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Which side do you sit on? And I ask you, my friends here in AI, education, and workforce, you know, we are at the responsible waterline here of determining whether that's half empty or half full. Because it's really just a matter of education, training, understanding, application, lifelong learning, soft skill development, and specialization. And whether we care to admit it or not, we are deep inside the belly of the greatest education and workforce transformation of our lifetime. We're deep in the belly of the greatest education and workforce transformation of our lifetime. That's why we're all here. So I've got to ask you, you know, what are the educators in this room doing about it? What are the employers doing about it? What are the students doing about it? What are the innovators doing about it? What are the governments doing about it? What are the parents doing about it? What are you doing about it? I can tell you what I'm doing about it. I'm solving for AI literacy for K-12 higher ed and corporate talent. I'm going to show you exactly how. But before I do that, I want to give you a little uh, experiment that I did recently. So I really wanted to understand this question. I really wanted to answer this question. And I surveyed students, I surveyed teachers, and I took Boston Consulting Group's report from profit to potential recently of 1,400 CEOs and their views of AI. And I did what any AI pioneer would do. I put all of those data sets into Anthropics Claude. And I said, Claude, Tell me the future. Give me the stats. Give me the consequences. Give me the strategies. Tell me the future of education and workforce relative to AI. And here's what I learned. Relative to students, most students are pretty empowered by AI. So I was pretty impressed with that. I was like, that's, that's, that's great. However, 3.8 out of five students feel that, that, that AI will significantly impact their future careers. However, most students do not feel that they're getting an adequate skill set training for an AI-powered future workforce. That's really significant. That, that's, that's huge. And then when it comes to teachers, about 50% were empowered, 50% threatened, which sounds about right, but their biggest concern is that students will misuse AI to cheat. And more importantly, they think that students might even avoid critical thinking altogether. I mean, that is the essence of teaching and learning and what we're, as educators, what we're passionate about. So I get it. You know, it's really important. But then when it came to employers, this is really interesting. The employers that are using AI and implementing that they're experiencing higher productivity, greater revenues, lower costs, so much so that 89% are citing 
AI as a top three tech spend within the next year, and 46% plan on upskilling their employees in the next three years. And I was kind of dumbfounded. I'm like, you know, this is crazy stuff. So we've got learners who, uh, students, who think that, who know that, that AI is gonna impact their careers, but they're not getting trained in the classroom. We've got educators who are, are threatened by the fact that, that it's undermining the essence of teaching and learning. And we've got employers that are just going gangbusters because they see the value and the benefits. What does that tell us about the future of education and workforce? So I was so crazy in doing this experiment. I said, all right, I've got so many questions. Where, where do I start? I've got so many questions. So the first one I asked, I was like, all right, Claude, tell me, what if we continue to do nothing? What if we continue to sit idly by or are indifferent? We sit on the sidelines. I said, okay, Ange, you sit by the sidelines. Here's what you have to expect. Talent pipeline breakdowns, lost productivity. And this last one, which hits me at my heart because I've got twin 16-year-olds. I've got two horses in the race. Younger workers displaced by automation. Whew, I said, wow, this is crazy stuff. My next question, all right, you, you told me what to expect. Well, well, when? When is this gonna really impact us? And so AI responded. In the next 12 to 36 months is when it's gonna reach a fever pitch. And I said, oh man, well, you know, that's, that's a little frightening, but it's good. We're at the beginning of it. You know, we're at the, the, the we can do this. We can do this. The stakeholders in this room, we can do it. We can get ahead of this. So my last question was, all right, give me some strategies. Give me something of how we should do this. What should we do? How can we get ahead of this? And it said hands-on student programs fo focused on real world problem solving and mentorship will demystify AI and unlock its potential on both ends, on education and workforce. And ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what we're doing with Solvably. The world's first AI literacy learning platform for K-12 higher ed and corporate talent. Solvably is a collaborative, creative, problem-solving platform. The best way to describe it is as if design thinking married Google Docs on steroids, married constructivism, and student agency found in escape rooms. If those three things had a baby, it, it would be Solvably. And how it works is that students work in teams. They collaborate in teams to solve for a real-world challenge working through a scaffolded design process, and they create an actionable deliverable. And at the end of the project, they evaluate each other's and their own soft skills. So we've really baked in the, the human intelligence, the human skill development, and the understanding and application of AI, AI literacy. So it's the first platform that truly combines AI plus HI in a learning situation. And at the end, students get an e-portfolio, a strengths-based e-portfolio to act as evidence with employers, college applications, and what have you. So it, you know, I've got the, the, the skills, here's my GPA, here's my extracurricular activity, and oh, Mr. or Mrs. Employer, here's how I'm gonna 10X my output using AI. Here's evidence, and oh, by the way, here are my soft skills as well. I've got that in my e-portfolio. Now, Solvably is an easy-to-use authoring tool. You can create a custom challenge in less than an hour, but it's also a library of over 500 challenges. So now K-12 students can solve for challenges using AI by subject, math, science, social studies, what have you. Higher ed students can solve for challenges using AI by major, engineering, computer science, business, and employers can solve for challenges by job role or function. So imagine you're the executive of a large company. You want to train your entire company in, in, in AI literacy for a competitive advantage. You may have your entire customer service group working in teams use, to use AI to solve for the customer response tickets inside of their division. You may have your sales teams working 
to use AI to, to shorten the sales cycle. And at the end of the day, the entire organization not only has, they not only feel empowered and enabled, but that company has all of these actionable deliverables that they can implement. What a huge competitive advantage. And we're having great success with the platform already. One example, working with a K-12 group out of South America, or South Africa, Australia, and the UK, and they are solving for an oceanic underwater habitat using AI. Now there's five teams, about 20 kids. I'll give you three examples. The first team said, we're gonna solve for homelessness, which I thought was pretty cool. The second team said, we're gonna build an underwater Disney world and solve for entertainment using AI in our underwater oceanic habitat. And the third team, I remember when we were in our discovery se session, they were a little slow to contribute. And I said, hey, you know, what's up? Why are you guys, you know, what are you, what are you thinking about? And they said, you know, we're thinking about prisons and the overcrowding of prisons. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. And as they went through the process, they really designed a newer solution, a more granular solution to a very specific problem. They're now designing AI-enabled therapists to treat social emotional impact of living underwater, the, the prisoners that would be living underwater. So we're unlocking possibilities. We're, we're driving human intelligence, AI literacy through, through learners. Another example we just completed with a Florida Gulf Coast University in their College of Education. Now they have uh, uh, several students in instructional design and, and professors all working together in different teams. Their challenge was using AI to create a 30-minute onboarding course for a corporate company, a window and door company. And I was so impressed with one team who came up with the solution of an AI-powered board game that helps onboard, train, and assess new employees. Pretty cool, right? A couple of weeks ago, I was at my dentist, and she was just fascinated by what I'm doing, and AI and education. Of course, I can't stop talking about this stuff. For those of you who know me, uh, you probably know that very well. And she said, give me an example. And I said, okay, in our AI Center of Excellence for K-12, we have a challenge where students use AI and, ma and math to predict the stock market in the next six months. And she said, can people really do that? And I said, yeah, of course. You know, we guide them through this process. They work in teams. And now we, we have a new crowdsourced open challenge on the Solvably platform that allows any users to join this challenge and use AI uh, math and, and solvably to, to predict the stock market. And the rave reviews and testimonials continue to come in. You know, some of the ones that, that I, I, I love, it was challenging. It made us think. You know, let's go back to that teacher slide who's, who's worried about students that are avoiding critical thinking. Here's a platform that makes us think and interact with our team. You know, it made us think and interact with our team. And then of course, the, uh, you know, it's really fun. And it really is fun. You know, and learning should be fun. We're at the pivotal moment of the greatest education and workforce transformation of our lifetime. Why shouldn't learning be fun? Why shouldn't this transformation be fun? And ladies and gentlemen and friends, in AI, education, and workforce. I'm gonna leave you with one final quote. You know, we are on that waterline. We have that responsibility. We can do this. We can get ahead of this. And I, I suggest that it's, it's now time. It is now time that we start solving problems using AI versus worrying about problems that may be caused by AI. And I ask for, for anyone here to, to, to join me in this mission of creating a more qualified global talent pool, a more future-proofed global talent pool. My name is Angelo Biasi, and I am solving for AI literacy for K-12 higher ed and corporate talent. Thank you so much for your time.